In this video, we're going to look at the inverse trig functions. We've already met the functions cos x, sin x, and tan x. The corresponding inverse functions are arc cos x, arc sin x, and arc tan x, respectively. Often, we'll see these written as cos to the minus 1 of x, sine to the minus 1 of x, and tan to the minus 1 of x. This was the button that you pressed on your calculator to find a missing angle in a right angle triangle. So if we look at an example, we might now have a right angle triangle that looks something like so. We've got now an angle x just here, and we've got the opposite, and the opposite might be 1, and the hypotenuse might be 2. So we can say now that x would be equal to the inverse sine, or sine to the minus 1, of now the opposite, which is 1, over the hypotenuse, which is 2. So we could see that this was going to give us an angle of 30 degrees, or pi, by 6 radians. So we can see that we've done some work with the inverse before. So what does arc cos x, arc sin x, or arc tan x mean? Let's take arc sin x as an example. Often this is hard to get your head around and fairly counterintuitive. Arc sin x is the angle whose sine is x. So if we have the sine of pi by 6, we could say that the answer is 1 half. If we were asked to find an angle x where sine x is equal to 1 half, we could say the angle whose sine is a half is pi by 6, or arc sine of 1 half is pi by 6. Often it takes a few sort of goes around that statement to get your head around it. As we go through the video, it should become slightly clearer. So why did I choose pi by 6? Why didn't I choose 5 pi by 6 or some multiple? Let's go back to our definition now of an inverse function. For a function to have an inverse, it must be one-to-one. -one. So let's go ahead and just sketch now the sine curve. And what we'll do is part now of the sine curve. And we can see now that two, and we'll just move the y-axis just here, to the right, positive values, we're going to come up now from zero. We've got a maximum of one at pi by two. We're back round now to the x-axis at pi will come round to the minimum and then back up now to 2 pi. If we went the other side, we would end up coming down to the minimum and then we'd come back up like so. So we can see now that this is not a one-to-one -one function. So I'll come round something like that. Okay, if we look at this, quite clearly it's not now a one-to-one -one function. If I run a horizontal line, we can see now that it's going to cut this horizontal line at more than one point. So what we need to do to find its inverse is restrict the domain. What we do is focus generally around this point zero, and I'm going to take now the point here. So we know that this is a maximum just here, and the maximum is where we have pi by 2, comma 1. Then if I take now the minimum just here, I can cut this off, and we will have something like so. So now I have a one-to-one -one function. So this point right here is going to now be pi by 2. This one is going to be now minus pi by 2. So we've got minus pi by 2 here. We've got this maximum value of 1, and we've got now this minimum value of minus 1. And we can say that y is equal to sine x. We can say now for the domain, the domain is going to be all real numbers. So let's put this here x belongs to the reals, and we've restricted the domain such now that x is going to be between now negative pi by 2 and positive pi by 2. That will give us the range, and we can write this here. We can say now that the range, and a couple of different ways you can write this, the range, which is going to be y, will be between negative and positive 1. So y is equal to sine x now has a restricted domain such that we got a one-to-one -one function. Once we have a one-to-one -one function, we can look at finding the inverse. We've seen before that the inverse function, if now the graph, uh, the axes are of equal scale, will be a reflection in the line y is equal to x. So what I'm going to do is a rough sketch. Later on, we will actually plot this. So the inverse function will look something like so. So this is now going to be the inverse sine, or we could say arc sine of x. And it will come round, and it will look something like that. So let's consider now, and I'll write this here, y is equal to arc sine x. Okay, so we've got arc sine x. Now, with the inverse function, the domain of the original function 
becomes the range now of the inverse and the range of the original function becomes the domain. So what we can say then, the domain for arc sine x, we've got now the domain. x will be a real number, so let's put this on. x is a real number, and x is going to be between now negative 1 and positive 1. The range, what we're going to have now in this particular case, we're just taking now the domain here. So we can say that y is going to be between now minus pi by 2 and positive pi by 2. So that is what we're going to end up having. So on your calculator now, if we took this, let's say we now did, and uh, let's say we did shift, uh, and we'll put this now in, this is in radian. So if I did now the inverse sine, shift sign now of minus 0.5, so let's put in minus 0.5. What this is going to do now is give me minus pi by 6. So we can see now that this is giving us values in this interval right here. So let's look at a more accurate plot of this. So what we've got then is the original curve, and we've got now a restricted domain, such that this, now we can see the maximum point is around here. We've got 1.5, which 1.57 is about pi by 2, so it's somewhere around here. Let's now look at the inverse. So if I write these on, what we've got here, this is now y is equal to arc sine x. So arc sine x and then y is equal to sine of x. So if we look now at the domain of arc sine x, we can see that we're going from minus 1, which is just here, to now positive 1. We can see we've got a maximum value just here of pi by 2, and then we've got the minimum value just here of minus pi by 2 in terms of the range. So all that's happened is we swap the domain for the range, we swap now the range of the domain, and we've reflected this now in the line y is equal to x. So if I just put on here y is equal to x, it's going to look something like that. I've done that nice and faint such that it's not now uh, blocking out any of the graphs, and we have the inverse. So when you're solving trig equations and you want a principal value, this is where your principal value is coming from. It's coming now from this particular interval. And then if we wanted to find subsequent solutions, by symmetry, we would just add multiples on. So when you're solving, this now is where it's taking you. So if we go back to our definition, in this particular case, we can say arc sine x is the angle between minus pi by 2 and positive pi by 2, whose sine is x. Let's now go ahead and look at y is equal to cos x. So we'll write this down like so. So y is equal to cos x. If we draw a quick sketch of cos x, again, we know that this isn't going to be one-to-one, -one, so we need to restrict the domain. Most of these questions about the inverse functions that you might get in an exam are all about sketching and having some idea of what's going on. So if we look now at cos x, we've got something that looks like this. So we're coming down, that's pi by 2. There now is going to be pi. We'll come back up 3 pi by 2, and then we'll come up now to 2 pi radians, and we'll do exactly the same the other side. Now, what I want to do is restrict the domain such that I can find now a 1 to 1. So what we've got then, we've got this point, and this is 0, 1. This is going to be now pi by 2, 0. And this point down here is going to be, let's put pi by 2, 0. That's pi by 2, 0. And this is going to be pi, comma, minus 1. So we can see around 0 that I can restrict now the domain of cos x between 0 and pi, such that this now becomes a one-to-one -one function. I can't go now, like I did with sine, to the left of this, as we've not got the one-to-one the -one part here. So let's get rid of everything now on this part, and then come back around here. So what we can say then, with the restricted domain, we've got y is equal to cos x, we've got the domain, so our domain x will belong to the real, so x is going to be a real number, and we can see now that the domain is going to be from 0 to, now we'll write it just here, 0 to pi radians. If we look at the range, as before, now we've got a maximum, a minimum value of minus 1, so we can say the range y, let's put it here, is going to be between now minus 1 
and positive one. So this is y is equal to cos x now, and we've got this restricted domain such that we can make this a one-to-one -one function. Now, often getting your head around the values of pi and pi by 2 give you some idea on how to plot this. So pi by 2 is roughly now 1.57, give or take. So what we're going to do is look now at y is equal to arc cos x. So we got arc cos x or the inverse cos. So we're going to switch now the domain and the range. So the domain will become the range of now, or the domain of the inverse is the range of the original. So we can say in this particular case, x is going to be a real number. So let's put this in. And we've got now that it will go from minus 1, and then we'll have x, and then we'll take this out now to positive 1. The range we can see is going to be the domain of the inverse function. And we can say now that y, in this particular case, is going to be between 0 and pi. So let's go ahead and put those points on. So what we've got then is this point just here. We've got now minus 1. Now minus 1 is going to be less than pi by 2. So let's just put that here. So that's going to be approximately there. And minus 1 is going to give me this value. And let's put it just here. The value is going to give me now pi, which I'm going to put here. OK, so that's pi. So let me just label this up and hopefully we'll be able to see this. So this is going to now be minus 1 and then we're going to get this point just here and that's going to be minus 1 comma pi. We can see here we've got pi comma minus 1 so this is going to be minus 1 comma pi. Let's now consider this point here. We've got pi by 2 comma 0. So this point is 0, 1. So if I put this just here, what we've got now is 0 comma pi by 2. So all I'm doing is swapping the x and y coordinates over. If we now think about this one, we've got 0, 1. So we're going to end up with this point, And that's going to be now 1, 0. So let's just make that a little clearer. That's going to be 1, 0. Now, if we think about the, the, uh, the point that we're going to get, we're going to come down now to this point here on the x-axis. And it will be now reflection in the line y is equal to x, assuming now that these scales are accurate. So what we'll do, we'll do a quick sketch of this and then we'll plot it more accurately. So this will come down, we'll come through here and it will end up looking something give or take like so. That's not brilliant, but it gives us some idea. And if we wanted, we could just now reflect this. So this now is a graph and we can put this on. So you've got y is equal to cos x with the restricted domain and we've got now y is equal to arc cos x. So two different functions now and this is a rough sketch. So let's go ahead now and look at this on a, a plot. So we'll find a plot. So here's a plot. So what we've got now, this is a better, um, a better example of it. So we're going to be reflecting this and again let's put this in the line y is equal to x which is going to look something like so. So let's put that through there and that is the line now y is equal to x. We might be asked to sketch that, and as you can see, it really is a rough sketch I've just done. So this one now is y is equal to, and I'll write it as cos to the minus 1 of x, just to give the alternative notation. And this one right here is going to be y is equal to cos x. So let's look now at the inverse. We've got now this point just here, minus 1. That's the start of the domain, as we've seen just here. So we've seen that the domain goes from minus 1 to positive 1. And minus 1 is going to give this value here of pi. We then come to 0, and that is pi by 2. We then come now to the last value in the domain, and that's going to be 1, 0. So this now is the inverse cosine. Let's just quickly look at this notation. We've seen in the reciprocal trig function video that now cos to the minus 1 of x is not equal to cos x to the power of minus 1. This now is the inverse. So this is the inverse and this now is the reciprocal. So let's put that there, reciprocal. So this was sec x. So that is sec x and this now is arc cos. And it's massively important that you now know the difference between those. So just a bit of notation. Don't get caught up with this. This is the inverse, not now the reciprocal. Okay, let's move on now to tan x. So what we'll do, we'll just write this here. So right in now, let's get shot of that. We'll write y is equal to tan x. 
So y is equal to tan x. And then if we draw a quick sketch and we want to now make this one to one. So if the uh, inverse will exist, we'll have now a one to one function. So to the right now of the x uh, of the y axis, we'll end up with something looking like that. And then to the left, it'll come something like that. So that's only as accurate as my hand or my graphing will allow on now the tablet, but it gives us some idea of what we've got. Now, we can see quite clearly in this particular interval now, we've got a one-to-one -one function. So if I took now the horizontal line, this is only going to cross the horizontal line in one and one place only. So this is a one-to-one -one function. So in terms now of looking at this, we can see that we can restrict the domain. Now we need to be a bit careful with this. Let's just look at this here. We can say the domain x is going to be a real number. So let's put this here. x will be a real number. And we can say that x is going to be between, and this is a strict inequality, minus pi by 2, and then we've got positive pi by 2. We can see that these are asymptotes. So x is going to be pi by 2 here. And then we've got now x will be equal to minus pi by two. So we don't have any great uh, points to plot as such on this. We can say that's going to be zero, zero. If we wanted now to pick on here, we could have pi by four comma one, but it's not that obvious. So what we want to do then is state the range. And we can see quite clearly on here now the range, we're going to have y is a real number. So the range, it will kick out all possible values. So with the range, if we now went up and down the y-axis, which values would we see? And the answer is everything. 